In this video, we'll be working through the question you see on the screen from the 2023 Ordinary Level Maths Leave Insert. I recommend you try the question before watching, and if you get stuck anywhere, feel free to ask for help in the comments. I will do my best to get back to you. Check out my channel for a playlist with all the other questions. This is question four from paper two, and this question is about probability, a little bit of counting, and then some averages. In part A of the question, they give us a person named Rohan, and he's a basketball player. They tell us that he scores 70% of his free throws on average. They also tell us to assume that the free throws are independent. Now that means that uh, one throw does not affect the next one. And it says find the probability that he scores his first three free throws. So all three of them that he scores. So how do we do that? The probability of, he, of him getting the first one is 0 0.7. The probability of him getting the first one and the second one is this multiplied by 0 0.7 again. And the next one, 0 0.7. So to get all three done, we have to multiply 0 0.7 by 0 0.7 or 0 0.7 cubed. And the answer there is 0 0.343. And that would, be the, that would be the answer, or if you want to write that in percentages, 34.3%. Uh, yeah, they asked for probability, so this would, this would be correct, but they didn't accept either of them. Okay, on to part two, and part two, uh, part two is a little harder. They sa say, find the probability that he scores exactly two of them. So that means that he misses one of them, but it doesn't say which one. So I'm gonna show you how most students should probably do this. And then at the end, I'll show you um, how you can do it uh, for a harder question. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be clear what I mean now. So how can he make two and miss one? There's three ways, in fact. He could, um, let's see, hit, um, hit, miss. He could hit, miss, hit. Or he could miss, hit, hit. They're the only three different ways he could mi um, make two of them. And what we could do is multi um, work out the probability of each of these and add them together. So let's uh, start doing that. The probability that he makes a shot is 0 0.7. The probability he makes another one, multiply by 0 0.7. The probability that he misses, now here's, a, here's the first tricky part. What's the probability he misses a shot? Probability he makes it is 70%, so the probability he misses is 30%, or 0 0.3. And then we can uh, multiply this one out. Uh, let's see, we get 0 0.147. Now we can do this two more times and add them together. But look, look what happens. Um, hit, miss, and hit. This is the same. S uh, 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.3. Multiply, it doesn't care which order you do it in. You're gonna get the same answer. And you're gonna get the same answer again. So instead of doing the second and the third one, all you had to really do is realize there was three of them. Um, realize, yeah, there was times three. So the probability that he makes two of them would be 0 0.47 multiplied by three which is equal to uh, 0 0.441, or again, you could write 44.1%. Um, there's a more complicated way to do this that in, in the ordinary level, they'll probably never ask, but they could have asked in this question, what's the chances of him making seven out of 10 shots? And you could not have, you cannot by hand work out how many that would be. Um, so there's a, there's a thing in your calculator, choose. So what did I say? T seven out of 10. That's 10, choose seven. Um, or you could write that as 10 in a brackets like this. So the probability of him making seven of them would be 0 0.7 to the power of seven. 
the probability of a missing tree, 0 0.3 for a tree. You could do it like this, all could be done on calculator, I'll give you an answer. In this question here, for example, it would have been tree choose two and hit two of them, miss one of them. So some students might just write this for this question. And the advantage of this is it can be done in many different questions. You don't have to write out, oh, how many different ways are there? The calculator will tell you how many ways. Three, choose two, uh, will come out as three. Um, 0 0.7 squared is what we did here. And um, 0 0.3 here. Anyway, that, this will get the same answer. Uh, equals, where are we here? 0 0.441. All right, let me clean this off and we'll do the last part. Actually, before I rub that out, there is a part three. It just asks, give one reason why uh, scoring his free throws might not be independent events. And they wouldn't be independent events. Um, each shot would affect the next shot. Um, for example, it would help him get his eye in. Practice makes perfect would be one example. He should get better as he goes on. If you shoot one shot, you might make 70%, but if, after shooting 20 of them, you should get a little better. Um, also, maybe after more shots, you get more tired and you get worse. <laughs> maybe nerves come in. Either way, one shot does affect the next. Shooting basketball shots are not independent. Uh, so just write something like that. Um, one shot affects the next shot. That's, that's the answer to part three. Okay, in part B, um, they ask us, this is still the basketball player, Rohan. And they ask us to work out the mean number of shots he scores in a game. Now students um, are pretty happy doing mean, the mean calculation, except in this case where it's a frequency table. Um, so what I see some students do to get the mean here is they add 0 plus 6 plus 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 16 and divide by 6, that's wrong. Add these numbers, divide by 6, that's wrong. Add all 12 of them and divide by 12, that's wrong. What, what this table is actually showing us is that in four, in four games, he scored zero. So there was four games he scored zero. There was five games that he scored six. And so on, all the way down to, let's say, 12, uh, three games that he scored 12, and one game that he scored 16. These are the numbers you would have to add up and divide by the total here to get the mean. And they very often give you a question in this frequency table. It says the mean, the frequency mean, something like that. I can't remember what it's called actually. Um, but it's very common to give you information like this. So all we have to do is add up all these zeros. Well, that's like saying zero multiplied by four. Zero multiplied by four. Add up all these six. Sixes, that's like saying six multiplied by five, and adding all these together. Add up all these, and that's eight multiplied by four, plus 10 multiplied by two, plus 12 multiplied by three, plus 16 times one. And if we add all these together, and um, put them on a calculator, zero times four plus six times five, I've done that already, uh, we get 134. And that'd be the top row. So the, the mean the mean would equal 134 divided by all of these numbers. How do we add up all of these numbers? Well, there's four zeros. There's five sixes. That's where I'm getting these. So we just add up this bottom row. Four plus five um, plus four and so on. So what do we get? We get nine, uh, 15, 18, 19. Again, double check that on the calculator. And we divide these again on a calculator, we get uh, 7.0, I'm not sure what we get, but it rounds off to 0 0.5. Um, yeah, I don't have the full number row out there. But if we round it off to two decimal places, that's what we get there. Okay, I hope that answered that question. If you have any follow-up questions, please leave them in the comments below. But until next time, have a great day.